Hey everyone, we have a different type of video today and I do want to apologize in advance in case this video ends up being a bit choppy. I'm really trying my best to pull it together and not cry during this video, but it's honestly really hard not to if you have not seen already. Unfortunately, I lost my dog Marshmallow. He was only 10 and a half years old, which to me is still very, very young. I've had him since I was 18 years old. I am now 29 years old. I always say that Marshmallow and I grew up together. I've had him since my first semester of college, all the way up to my college graduation, to being engaged. He was in our engagement photos, the marriage, and moving out for the first time, just to name a few milestones and so much more. And Everyone around says that Marshmallow taught them patience. I say he taught me the complete opposite because whenever places were booked for appointments and he needed to be seen, I would be determined and keep trying, keep fighting to make sure he got seen as soon as possible because he was my baby. He was my son. I was his mom and I don't have children. That was my son and he just wasn't a dog to me. He was a member of the family and he had a lot of prior health issues but one thing about marshmallow is he didn't let that affect him or his quality of life he still loved going on walks exploring new smells traveling he would still play with his toys and get excited for food and his treats and seeing his grandparents and he just loved people honestly so he taught me to appreciate the small things in life as well and just to keep trying to keep fighting and most importantly he taught me how to be a mom but as i mentioned marshmallow had a lot of prior health issues so about when he was four or five years old he was diagnosed with a detached retina which ultimately he ended up being blind he had dry eye high blood pressure hyperthyroidism epi and b12 deficiency so even with all that he was given medication and i would always ask is this life-threatening is this going to shorten his lifespan or affect his quality of life and i was always told like no it shouldn't affect like his lifespan or quality of life as long as he's being checked up regularly to make sure the dosage is correct that he's being given the medication all is good and i am very fortunate that i work from home 100 percent of the time so i was able to give him his medication just to keep an eye on him in case he didn't seem like he was doing well so he would see his primary vet at least once a month for his b12 injection he worked closely with internal medicine just to make sure there was no issues coming about he saw ophthalmology at least once a year and he was working with a dermatologist for his fur loss so he was always being seen in some shape or form and just this time around just came as a complete shock when i took him to the emergency and he wasn't coming home with us. So last year, Marshall kept getting these reoccurring fevers and his primary vet kind of noticed he kept coming in every few weeks for a fever. They give him antibiotics and a fluid packet and they said he needs to be seen by internal medicine. Internal medicine sent me to dental, a cardiologist, and they also ran some tests on him. Everything was fine, came out well, and then I was sent elsewhere just to see what's going on. And basically I was told that Marshmallow has what's called zebra stripes. So they could run every single test possible and they can't find out a cause for these reoccurring fevers. So that was very frustrating within itself, but he didn't have one for like a good four months or this year, I should say. So that was definitely really good to hear. And you know, he'd still follow up with his appointments with internal medicine and his primary vet all was well and then shortly after solving about two weeks or so he had chicken pox looking like spots on his bag and just all over his neck and white heads and also at night time i would see like little spots because he would go to bed with us and i saw that it was blood and marshmallow would never whine or show an ounce of pain he was a strong little guy and I was like, oh my goodness, like, why is he bleeding? And it was coming from his nose and his mouth. And I tried calling our local um, ER department and I got denied. And I tried calling another one, they didn't pick up. Tried calling another one, got denied. Tried calling another one, got denied. They said it sounded more like a dental issue. And since he wasn't showing signs of pain that I couldn't bring him in next night, he started bleeding a little bit more from the nose and mouth and I kept waking up every few hours to like wipe out his 
nose and his mouth and to swap out the blankets because I don't want him sleeping like that. I wanted him to be comfortable. And then with his skin, I kept trying to get him in and everywhere said they were booked to August or June. I was like, no, he needs to be seen like his skin's looking worse. I was calling literally every single city in California trying to get him in sooner. And I did get him in Pasadena within like two weeks, but his skin just kept getting worse. And with the bleeding, I was like, no, he needs to be seen sooner. I even called a different state. Um, so Nevada was able to get him in within like the next two days. So I was willing to make that drive if that meant him being seen and treated. So I took him to Nevada and he had an in bacterial infection, but she was concerned with his blood not clotting. So she was concerned with him possibly bleeding out, which she didn't seem to deem as an emergency per se, but says, you know, I should like get on that and possibly see dental for the abscess in the tooth. And then on the way back home or on the drive back home, he was sneezing a lot and little droplets of blood, but it was just more frequent. And then I saw his mouth had like a lot of blood in it. And right when he picked up his medicine from his primary vet, I called the ER. I'm like, no, they, he can't go to sleep like this. Like, this isn't cool. Like, this is ridiculous. And finally, they're like, yeah, bring him in. And he was bleeding when I brought him in. They got someone out right away. And the doctor called us back. And she said, it's a good thing you brought him in when he digs. He's like bleeding everywhere. And I go, I tried bringing him in two nights ago and you denied me. And she goes, I'm so sorry if I need to retrain my staff on that. I go, there's phone records. Like I got denied. So I just felt like so like shocked. And then she did say it was life threatening and that it was too late to run like additional tests. They need to start him on steroids or I could end his life or just take him home and see what happens. I was like, well, no, like I want to go. I want to keep fighting. That's why I said I go. I have fought to keep him alive this whole time. Like, let's keep fighting. She's like, I think that's a good idea. So he, she goes, he needs to stay overnight. And I was like, okay. And I had all his medication from the Nevada appointment. And they're like, no, we, we have our own. This hospital is very well equipped. They have like internal medicine, cardiologists they have all the departments you can think of for pets there. So I knew he was in good hands. They also had 24 seven monitoring. And I gave him his eye drops so I'm like, no, it's my baby. Like, I should be taking care of him. I just felt so helpless in that moment. And I wasn't expecting the news that it was life-threatening. And I thought, what if they did take him in two nights before? Like, could that have saved his life, literally? And just to speed things up, I, I would get good news in the morning that the medicine is helping and everything. And our first visit... Um, we were able to see him and bring him salmon and sweet potato. Basically, to stabilize him, he needed blood transfusions, the steroids. Also, he needed a cardiologist on hand for his seizures. He needed like a fluid, a 24-7 monitoring. He just needs so much just to keep him alive. And basically, I would get really good news in the morning that he's doing well. He has such an appetite. His levels are increasing. And then at night, they would say, you know, he's had a few more episodes. Um, also, one thing that just, like, traumatizes me is they would tell me at night, like, hey, like, I, I think he might, you know. They didn't say it, but kind of have your ringer on. They said no news is good news. So if we don't call you through in the night, he's good. He's alive. But they're like, you might want your ringer on tonight in case we need to call you. Or if he's passed, we'll call you. Or if he's about to, we'll call you. So... I never have my ringer on now. It's just, I wasn't sleeping as it was, just wiping the blood off him. And then I kept checking my phone, like, is my ringer on? Did they call me? So it was just a lot, to be honest. Towards the last two days or so, they said, I asked, like, when can he come home? Like, what's the best case scenario? And basically, they're telling me, like, they're running these tests. And I can't tell you the logistics. Like, I just kind of tuned out when they basically said, he probably wasn't coming home so basically the steroids was helping him but whatever he had going on internally his immune system was attacking like the steroids so it's like counteracting I think that's what they said it's counteracting so you know it is improving something else is attacking his body that they can't determine what it is and that's like causing the seizures or I feel like I got so lucky and I'm very fortunate that every other time he's gone to this hospital or any other hospital that it wasn't life-threatening and I just 
really didn't expect this time around. Like we're coming from another vet visit who didn't think it was an emergency and he was acting so normal throughout the day to be told basically he's not gonna come home. And she even said, we probably have to keep him for a week, but he could pass at any time when he goes home, he could bleed out. He'll need to come back every two to three weeks for a blood transfusion because basically he had to get a blood transfusion like every day or every two days. He had to have steroids every night. He had a cardiologist in case he had his seizures. 24-7 monitoring. He had a fluid packet. So he was going through so much on a daily basis just to stay alive. But it was so hard visiting him because he would get so excited and we'd bring him salmon and sweet potato and like goat's milk. And he was just like so happy and just his skin was looking a lot better, which they ended up saying like his skin wasn't due to dermatology, but like the bleeding. So it was hard. Like he was looking better and somewhat improving, but basically they were saying like his levels have to be like this high for him to come home. I think the normal or the safe range was 150,000 and his count was eight or 10,000. The last two nights, they did bring up the option like you might want to consider putting him down and this is the services that we offer um you know if you choose to go that route i think that's a, a safe decision to make and i was just like it's so hard because he's improving like i i don't know and the next morning we we're gonna visit him and the doctor calls and said he had three seizures um, he's in ER right now, and she goes, I think you should come down here right now. And I asked if there's any way I can have one last visit with him, and she goes, he doesn't have time. She goes, if you can get down here right now, which is about a 40-minute hour drive away from us, she goes, I don't know if he'll even make it while you're on your way over here. And she goes, I'm going to have him sedated so he doesn't have any more seizures, so... I just knew there's nothing I could do at that point. And we all got to hold him and say our goodbyes. It was me, Ernie, and my parents. And I just want to keep those memories just for us. It's very personal and intimate. Then I came back to the house and I brought his blanket that I had wrapped him in. And then Coco started sniffing it and getting excited. And Coco's having a hard time right now. I think she's picking up on my energy, which I've been trying to not cry in front of her. She's not eating or drinking now. It's really hard and I almost don't know what to do with myself anymore. Like me and Marsh had our own like routine. Like maybe he took up 40 minutes of my day, if that, but like I did not eat one meal at home without him sitting right next to me or on my lap. Or if I was watching TV, I would just lay him on my chest. I went to sleep with him. I woke up next to him. Like when I'd wake up, I let him out and put a sweater on. And then while he was outside, I was prepping his breakfast and adding his medicine. When he'd come in, he'd be looking for it and like clean his bowl and then lunchtime and dinner time and his eye drops and wiping his face and paws every night. And I do grieve differently than most people. I like staying busy and staying distracted so i canceled all his medications all his appointments i notified all his vet and vet specialists because i didn't want them calling me wanting to rebook something or calling and asking about him it was just going to be too much for me and now everything is situated everything's canceled before all this happened like other things were going on and ernie and i were like oh my gosh like why is everything bad happening right now and this just like really took a huge toll on me like emotionally physically mentally financially on top of other things that had occurred and then this vet stay and i thought the end of life services covered more but that was an additional cost i did create a gofundme account any amount would be greatly appreciated i also will include my venmo because some of you said you feel more comfortable using a more common pay app so I will have that link down below and I just want to say thank you to everyone for all your positive messages and support and checking in on me. Every time I visit Marshmallow, I let him know that so many people are rooting for him and people who never even met him just knew how sweet he was or how much he meant to me. So I just think that's so amazing to have and I just want to thank you all for 
truly like everything and just being very supportive during this time. I don't know when I will be ready to film regular content so I will keep you all updated. Again I like staying busy when I am grieving but it's just hard to be in like a positive upbeat mood when I'm just not genuinely there yet so thank you all again. This is just a reminder to hold on to your fur babies a bit closer because life is so short and just to tell your loved ones that you love them and I will keep you all posted but I'm just going to end things here. Bye everyone.